Jeep. It is perhaps one of the strongest brands in the automotive world. It has a military pedigree that dates back to at least World War II, and for generations it has sustained its rugged, classic American image. It is also Fiat Chrysler's top-selling brand, and it inspires a rare sort of cult-like devotion other automakers would kill for. Jeep specializes in sport utility vehicles. It does not make a single sedan or sports coupe. That has left it extraordinarily well positioned for the recent boom in SUVs. And I think one of the cool things about the Jeep brand is over the years, we've really stayed true to, uh, to, to that you know, first and, and uh, core being of authenticity and what you know, four wheel drive capability means. However, the secret is out and automakers everywhere are ramping up their own SUV and pickup inventories, and some are aiming their products squarely at segments Jeep has long dominated. Jeep is answering with a slew of new innovations and new products to preserve its strong position and envied reputation. Industry insiders say Jeep can no longer expect that its legendary name and distinctive styling will keep buyers coming back. Jeep traces its modern history back to 1940, and its story starts with war. Preparing for its involvement in World War II, the United States government sent requests to 135 automakers for a quarter-ton light reconnaissance vehicle. Three responded, Ford, a company called Bantam, and a third company by the name of Willis Overland. Willis Overland made about 360,000 Jeeps for the U.S. Army throughout the war. As World War II ended, Willis debuted the first civilian Jeep, or CJ, for the public in 1945. Before the war was over, the government and really the public recognized what a wonderful vehicle this was. So even before the war was over, um, early in the war actually, uh, the engineers at Willie Overland began designing a civilian version. Willie's Overlands were allowed to begin manufacturing before the war was even over. July 17th of 45, the first civilian Jeep rolled off the line. It released the Willis Wagon in 1946, the Willis Overland Truck in 1947, and briefly even a convertible sedan called the Jeepster, which ran from 1948 to 1951. Over the years, the Jeep brand name grew. At different points in its history, Jeep has made pickup trucks, wagons, military and civilian Jeeps, and an array of commercial vehicles, some that broke new ground in engineering and design. For example, in the 1940s, Jeep released the first all-steel station wagon, which resisted rain and weathering much better than the wood-paneled wagons common at the time. In the 1960s, the Jeep catalog dramatically expanded to 14 models from just six in the 1950s. The Wagoneer, introduced in the 1960s, brought the first overhead cam six-cylinder truck engine and was the first 4x4 vehicle to have automatic transmission and an independent front suspension. This was the first time that a station wagon body with four-wheel drive had an automatic transmission. Nobody had put an automatic transmission to a four-wheel drive system before, um, which really expanded the market. So it really stepped up the SUV game. Um, it was a game changer. In the 1970s, Jeep introduced the first automatic full-time four-wheel drive system, considered revolutionary at the time. In the following decade, the 1980s, the company came out with another vehicle that would prove revolutionary, the Jeep Cherokee XJ, one of the best-selling SUVs of all time and a big step toward the compact crossovers so frequently seen since. In the 2000s, Jeep released the Wrangler Rubicon, then and now the most capable Jeep Wrangler trim level. In that era, the company also came out with a four-door version of the Wrangler, which dramatically boosted sales. Over the years, ownership of the Jeep brand has changed hands several times. It was initially owned by Willis Overland, then bought by Kaiser in the 1960s. Kaiser later sold Jeep to American Motor Corporation and left automaking entirely. AMC was then itself sold to French car maker Renault before Chrysler bought AMC in 1987. Of course, Jeep was then caught up in the troubles Chrysler faced throughout its history, including an ill-fated acquisition by the German automaker Daimler, known for the Mercedes-Benz brand. Daimler sold Chrysler to private equity firm Cerberus Capital Management, and then Chrysler went bankrupt in 2009. 
It was briefly owned by the US government and then sold to Italian carmaker Fiat, forming the Fiat Chrysler group of brands. Despite this tumultuous history, Jeep has been able to maintain a surprisingly consistent fan and customer base. Part of the reason for this, say many auto industry insiders, is its appeal to heritage. The brand has a long and illustrious history, and models made today bear a fair amount of resemblance to the earliest Willis Jeeps sold to the US Army. I would describe Jeep as a very, very heritage-filled brand. In fact, it may be one of the most heritage-filled brands in the marketplace today. The best example of this, of course, is the Wrangler, that imposing, rugged rock climber beloved by hardcore off-roaders and people who want other people to think they're hardcore off-roaders. Though it has changed over time, the Wrangler's DNA goes all the way back to the original Willis Jeeps sold during the World War II era. The civilian Jeeps, or CJ models, that were built as the war ended in 1945 lasted until 1986, a 41-year history. They were incredibly popular. The CJ5 alone had a 30-year production history, the longest of any single production vehicle at the time it was discontinued. The actual Wrangler name debuted in 1986, in time for the 1987 model year. It is hard to emphasize just how strong the Wrangler's reputation is among off-roading vehicles. The Wrangler is absolutely by far and away the halo vehicle of the Jeep brand. It's really the soul and center of the Jeep brand. It, it's also one of Jeep's uh, hottest sellers in numerical terms, but the Jeep brand really wouldn't be what it is without the Wrangler. In fact, I would argue that the Jeep brand couldn't exist in its current state without Wrangler. Jeep sold about 228,000 Wranglers in 2019 and 240,000 the year before. Apart from the Wrangler, Jeep's other two most popular models in the US are also pivotal products in both Jeep's history and the history of the automotive industry. They are the Cherokee and Grand Cherokee. The Cherokee began life in the 1970s as a two-door version of the Wagoneer built on the Wagoneer's large platform, called the SJ platform in the company's nomenclature. In 1984, Jeep transferred the Cherokee and Wagoneer names to a smaller platform that went by the label XJ. This was in part a response to anxieties over gas prices spurred by the oil crises of the 1970s. It was a pioneering move. And I think what Jeep had originally kind of paved the way for some of these other brands to create more comfortable, more car-like, nicer ride SUVs, um, because they knew that people liked that body style, that like outdoorsy, utilitarian, uh, a lot of cargo space, um, usable space uh, type of a vehicle. The XJ platform made the Cherokee the first SUV with unibody construction, meaning it was built using a construction method where the body of the car and the chassis are fused together. Unibody construction has long been thought to offer many advantages for certain types of cars. It can make them lighter, easier to handle, and drive at high speeds, for example. It hit the sport utility vehicle and pickup truck segments later due to the common preference for traditional body-on-frame construction in vehicles that haul or drive off-road. Just like the way the early Willis Jeeps provided a template for the classic American Jeep form that became the Wrangler, the Cherokee was critical in helping to define the template for the modern sport utility vehicle and crossover that have become ubiquitous in America. The Cherokee was really one of the big models that uh, inspired this huge rush to SUVs that eventually came into full force in the 90s. It wouldn't have happened without that original 1984 Cherokee. That really planted the seed. The Grand Cherokee, released in 1993, was a pioneering premium crossover SUV. It looked modern, it felt modern, it, it was modern all the way through it. Uh, it really changed people's perception of an SUV, um, that it could be your daily driver. These key products and others have turned Jeep into one of the most adored and envied brands in the automotive world. Jeeps represent uh, today vehicles that are for the most part very, very uh, practical and uh, functional for everyday life, but they have this mystique about the brand that makes people coming back for more. Much of what fuels this admiration is a strong base of customers and fans. 
Jeep owners have their own clubs and schedule events dedicated to driving. For example, weekend-long Jeep Jamboree off-road trips have been happening since 1953, when a Jeep owner first organized a drive across the Rubicon Trail in the Sierra Nevada mountains. Jeep has also listened to its customers over the decades and used feedback to refine the Jeep Wrangler's designs. The Wrangler changes little from year to year, but Jeep does make incremental improvements based on customer input. It's really the customers that, that, that run the brand, and we listen to them and, we, and, and try to respond to them you know, with what they're looking for uh, with respect to product. So a couple of recent examples of us doing that are you know, the diesel engine in the, uh, in the Wrangler, they asked for that very common request. Gladiator was a great example of that as well, bringing a pickup truck back to the uh, Jeep lineup. The Jeep Wrangler's gradually shifting looks give it a continuity with its past. It also makes it easy to source parts for repairs, and Wranglers are known for their excellent aftermarket support. Jeep also has a strong reputation outside the United States, even in countries where American cars are not that popular. For example, U.S. automakers control a minuscule portion of the auto market in Japan, where buyers favor smaller vehicles with features more tailored to local tastes. However, of the American brands in Japan, Jeep stands out. Japanese buyers bought 13,354 Jeeps in 2019. The second most popular American brand, Chevrolet, sold only 585 units the same year. Jeep sales were actually up 16% in Japan in 2019, despite the fact that car sales overall were down 1.5%, and import sales rose only 3.2%. Interestingly enough, for a country that loves small cars, the boxy Wrangler is Japan's most popular Jeep model. Jeep is also making some inroads elsewhere in the world. It is, for example, becoming a serious threat to Land Rover in Europe, surpassing the legendary British brand on that continent in 2018. The strong brand recognition has helped make Jeep Fiat Chrysler's best-selling brand by a pretty wide margin. FCA sold 923,291 Jeeps in 2019. The next best-selling FCA brand is Ram Trucks, which sold 703,023. No other FCA brand comes close in terms of sales. That means the Jeep is pretty well positioned to stick around as FCA merges with the French carmaker PSA Group. But that doesn't mean that Jeep is immune to threats of its own. It has maintained a loyal and strong reputation at home and abroad, seemingly in spite of some potential weaknesses. For one thing, none of Chrysler's brands have historically done well in reliability rankings. It's gotten some really bad quality marks, and that hasn't stopped the brand. The sales continue to grow, so it's, it's almost like Teflon in that regard. It just gets criticism, but, but people still like it. Perhaps Jeep's success in spite of that has shown the strength of the brand and the enthusiasm of its base. And to be fair, FCA has made an effort to improve reliability in recent years. We are the longest lasting SUV brand out there, and it's a, an award that we recently got which talks to the longevity of the, uh, of the brand and, uh, and the connection uh, to our customers. But we have a lot of you know, very durable vehicles that are still on the road that gives us the longest lasting 4x4 SUVs of any other brand out there. But apart from that, Jeep is faced with a great deal more competition than it has been in the past. The 1980s Jeep Cherokee might have helped pave the way for the crossover sport utility, but now virtually every automaker has several crossovers and SUVs. Passenger cars are kind of almost the exception now. SUVs and crossovers are really the norm. They are now the biggest chunk of the marketplace. So the Jeep brand really doesn't exist in anything resembling a vacuum anymore. Uh, it now competes in the biggest portion of the marketplace. Crossovers tend to be profitable. Customers are willing to pay higher prices for them than they have been for comparably sized passenger sedans and compact cars. In part, say analysts, this is because buyers feel they are getting more for their money in an SUV, more storage, more capability, a more flexible vehicle. But competition is stiff, and a lot of crossovers look pretty similar. Jeep may have the advantage here. Its vehicles do have a very distinct appearance. 
However, cars are increasingly sold on the strength of their interiors, the comfort of the cabin, and the features available, such as various climate control options or infotainment system functions. This is an area Jeep needs to watch. Things have to get better in the interior um, to keep up with your competitors. So I think that even though the exterior may not have to change that much, I would say that people still want that nice interior with all the tech features and the goodies and, and, and all of that. It is also something FCA does know a thing or two about. Jeep's sister brand, Ram Trucks, dazzled the world of pickup trucks and boosted sales in 2019 with its revamped line of pickups outfitted with widely praised interiors. As competition in SUVs grows more stiff, companies are looking for ways to branch out and find new segments that others haven't conquered yet. For the 2019 model year, Jeep re-entered the pickup truck market with the Gladiator, which is basically a Wrangler with a longer wheelbase and a bed in the back. The Gladiator name is a revival of a name Jeep once used on pickups sold in an earlier era. But apart from launching so-called white space products that try to identify needs not yet served by automakers, companies will happily try to steal some share away from a dominant player in a corner of the market. Ford has apparently done exactly this by bringing back the Bronco name, which it has more or less positioned as a direct challenger to the Jeep Wrangler. The Bronco has garnered praise so far for its design and innovative approaches to the off-road category. For many, many years, Wrangler has had that pure off-road segment all to itself. It's been sharing it with nobody. And you know, there have been there have been certain models that have come and gone. Now here comes Ford with the Bronco, another heritage-inspired product, perhaps not with the same level of heritage that Jeep has. Anyone looking for a real off-roader really hasn't had any choice outside of Wrangler. It's basically Wrangler or nothing. Now all of a sudden there's another choice. But Jeep is doing a fair bit of innovation of its own in order to keep up with the times. There is already a mild hybrid Wrangler, and the company just released its first plug-in hybrid Wrangler for the 2021 model year. You know, I think our, our biggest challenge um, that, we've, that we're looking at is, is the continued improvements in fuel economy that, uh, that our government is, is asking us for, and then the electrification uh, plan that we've, uh, that we've got. Jeep also plans to resurrect the Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer names as three-row SUVs, which Jeep currently does not have. It's beautiful. It's got the most luxurious uh, interior that uh, that our company has ever done, and certainly that our brand has ever done. We, you know, launched the concept a few weeks ago, and you know, having those customers reach out to us with some of their warmth, the feelings of, hey, you know, my grandfather drove this or my father drove this. I can't wait to get one of these things. Can't believe how nice the interior is. You know, can't believe um, you have, you know, three, four wheel drive systems. All of that kind of stuff is just, uh, you know, really special place to be. Jeep's latter day practice of reaching into its history for inspiration shows that it understands how its own heritage is an essential part of the brand's timeless appeal. It will need to ensure that its current and future products live up to or even exceed the company's legendary reputation.